Welcome to the demo video for Cribble Logstream. Machine data engineers work with high volume, complex, and polystructured events, which present a number of unique challenges. Multiple data collector agents to collect the same data. Verbose, noisy data streams with potentially sensitive information delivered to closed proprietary data storage. Logstream is the first streams processing engine, purpose built for observability log, and metric data. Logstream helps administrators liberate their existing deployed machine data pipelines to send data to any data store, event stream, or data lake, while securing the contents of their data and controlling costs. This demo serves as an overview of the product's key concepts, capabilities, and deployment. First, let's review a basic architecture of Cribble. Cribble supports many different sources of machine data, including the most popular log shippers, such as Splunk's Forwarder, Elastic's Beats, FluentD, the most popular event streaming platforms, such as Apache, Kafka, and Kinesis, and the most popular metrics protocols, like StatsD and Graphite, as well as metrics agents, such as Telegraph and CollectD. Cribble then runs each event through our routing engine, which delivers events to a given pipeline, which enriches, filters, and transforms the events before delivering them to a configured destination. Cribble supports the most popular data stores, such as Splunk, Elastic, Kafka, Graphite, S3 compatible, and more. Data comes into Cribble as events, which can be thought of as a single document representing something which happened. It could be a log entry, a metric measurement, or a record from a Kafka stream. Events are a tag bag of key value pairs. We call Cribble a schemaless machine data engineering tool because each source will have a unique schema. For example, Splunk has underscore raw, host, source, and source type. Syslog has facility and priority fields. Elastic Beats adhere to the Elastic Common Schema using message and host.name, while Kafka has an arbitrary set of key value pairs that come off the topic. Events coming from log data sources aren't all log lines full of human readable text. Logs often contain nested structure with JSON, CSV, Apache Common, or other structured formats inside the underscore raw or message field in the event. Cribble solves this by running events through optional conditioning pipelines for each source and destination before the events go through routes and pipelines. This allows for nearly infinite configurability and a number of very useful use cases. Input conditioning pipelines can be used to normalize schema. So for example, the same processing pipeline can be used on Windows events, whether they come from Splunk's Universal Forwarder or Elastic's WinLogBeat. Conditioning pipelines can also enrich the data before it's seen by the routing engine. For example, to score events and determine which class of storage they should go to. Output conditioning pipelines can be used for transforming events back to the schema the destination system expects, or to drop events which are not a good fit for that particular destination. Routes determine, based on the contents of an event, which pipeline or pipelines an event will head down. Routes are where events can easily be cloned and processed by multiple pipelines and multiple destinations. A pipeline is a chain set of functions that operate on the data. Each function, optionally based on a matching filter expression, operates on the event. Examples are aggregating events into new metric events, adding or removing fields, including in nested data structures like JSON, masking potentially sensitive information, or suppressing duplicate messages in a stream. Now, let's examine the Cribble UI, where we'll show you sources and destinations, routes and pipelines in action. First, to orient you in the product. On the left is routes and pipelines, which we'll cover last. To the right, we show you some operational statistics about the data flowing through Cribble. At the bottom, we allow you to navigate through popular items, such as the top 10 inputs, source types, and destinations. In sources, we allow you to configure how data comes into Cribble. Each source has a number of configuration options available to it. 
Kafka allows you to configure the broker and topics to pull data from. HTTP supports a number of different payload schemas, including Elastic Bulk Ingestion and Splunk's HTTP Event Collector. Each allows you to configure a conditioning pipeline to run on events coming into that source. Destinations, similarly, allows you to configure how to output data to various destinations. As you can see, we also get status information from inputs and outputs so administrators can see at a glance whether a destination is healthy. For Splunk, we have a few options, including load balance output, where Cribble will spray the data evenly across the index tier. File-based outputs like S3 allow you to define a partitioning expression, which will govern how Cribble breaks up data into smaller files, where the partitioning structure can be used by Athena, Hive, and others for faster performance. Expressions are JavaScript expressions and used throughout the product, as we'll see several times in the next few minutes. Now, back on the home screen, let's dig into routes and pipelines. Routes work on events and are processed in linear order. Events come into Cribble as a document with a set of key value pairs that are run against a series of filter conditions to determine how to route them. We design routes to feel like the paradigms DevOps or security professionals would be familiar with, like an access control list or firewall rules. Each route has an ID and a filter expression, which is a one-line JavaScript expression. Expressions in Cribble are very powerful. You can articulate complex Boolean logic, and you have access to JavaScript functions from built-ins like a regex match, which can easily be run on a field like underscore raw, or against helper functions, Cribble ships like a cider match. Expressions allow for nearly limitless expressibility, and they also provide a rich user experience of type ahead and validation. After matching a filter expression, routes can be configured to either send to the default destination or to a different destination. Routes are then configured to send data down a particular processing pipeline. This is also where we can make branching and routing decisions. If final is set to no, then a copy of the event is sent down the pipeline, allowing the original to be further processed by additional routes and pipelines. For our first example, I'm going to examine a use case of redacting sensitive information in my logs. I've been notified by my security department they've discovered some sensitive information, including an unredacted social security number, in one of our business transaction logs. Changing the application will take some time, so I'm going to use Cribble to redact the information with an MD5 hash. I'll click here on the masking pipeline to drill into the pipeline. Pipelines are a series of functions. Here, we have three different mask operations running against the data. Cribble ships a variety of functions. Aggregation allows you to run statistical operations over tumbling windows of time to convert events to metrics. Drop allows you to drop events based on a filter condition. Sampling and dynamic sampling allow you to selectively pare down large data sets like flow logs down to only forwarding one out of every n events. And dynamic sampling has the system ensure you get a good distribution of data based on a given expression. Eval allows you to add, remove, or modify fields using JavaScript expressions. Lookup allows you to enrich events against the CSV table, such as the threat list. Mask, we'll show here, allows you to search for a regular expression and replace the text. Parser allows you to parse and work with nested structured data and log messages like JSON, CSV, or Apache Common web logs. Regex filter and regex extract allow you to extract structure or filter based on a regular expression. Suppression allows you to do streaming deduplication of data to clean up error storms and repeated messages. Back to our redacting sensitive information use case, first, to redact this information, I want to gather a sample of the data that's coming in unredacted. Cripple allows you to capture a sample, and the preview functionality will show you interactively how this pipeline is transforming the data. Now that I have a sample, let's see how Cribble makes it easy to work with this data. On the left, the first mask function is already configured to redact our sensitive data. Now that we have a sample, we can easily pop open our filter expression to validate that the function will indeed be triggered. Next, as we pop open the mask editor, we can interactively design our regular expression and replacement expression to redact the sensitive information with high confidence. 
The editor is a Regex 101-like experience, which shows you what the regular expression is matching, including the capture groups, as well as how the replacement expression will operate on the event. We can see social equal matches as group one, and the social security number matches as group two. Now I'm going to recreate the replacement expression. Replacement expressions are also JavaScript expressions. First, I put in a backtick, which represents a JavaScript template literal, a little templating language built into JavaScript. Next, I put in variable g1 using syntax similar to shell variable expansion. g1 represents group one from our capture. Next, I'm going to call a helper function under C, our cribble global object, and mask, and use an md5 masking function. As we can see below, we now have a redacted social security number. This is a little longer than the original string, so adding a second parameter to mask will clamp this to the length of the original string. As I return to preview, I'm now in the out section, which shows how the event has been modified. As we look in underscore raw, we can see it's orange to indicate that it was modified, and I can see my social security number has indeed been redacted. Further down the pipeline, I have a second masking function, which uses a different helper function for encryption. Cribble allows you to encrypt data to any destination with reversible decryption. This allows different roles to be able to see different sections of the raw message. Compared to how most vendors recommend securing sensitive data, this avoids duplicating the data. Another common use case is reshaping data. For this part of the demo, I'm going to be trimming down large JSON messages. The producer of log data and the consumer of log data are different personas with different motivations. The producer may be a vendor or in-house developer, but generally the producer is incentivized to provide all the data anyone might ever need. Who knows what someone will need in a year or two down the line? This creates a problem for consumers of log data since many times they are being fed dozens of fields when a handful are all that's needed for their use case. Historically, given the lack of easy controls in the ingestion pipeline, the simplest solution is just to deal with overly verbose messages. Cribble makes fixing this problem trivial. We can see from this capture a few things. First, the payload is JSON, a typical nested payload with structured text inside of the event's native structure. Cribble makes it easy to navigate the structured information and provides a tree view of the structure. We can see here the developer has included the headers twice, once as an object and a second as an object of arrays. This duplicative information is not helpful to us. Secondly, we have a number of fields with null values. At the left, we've added a parser function, which uses the reserialize method to read the structured data, manipulate it, and write it back to that same field. We've configured Cribble to drop the multi-value header field and keep only the values which are not null. On the outside of preview, we can see a color-coded diff of the structure where we dropped a portion of the raw message. When we look at the statistics, we can see that this simple change has trimmed 40 plus percent of the data volume while not impacting our use case at all. There are many other use cases for Cribble which are in our demo environment, like routing, enrichment, aggregation, sampling, and suppression. Our demo environment is available as a set of Docker containers with a GitHub repo with instructions for how to start it. We encourage you to clone our repo and dive into all the use cases in the demo. Lastly, let's take a look at how Cribble is deployed. Cribble is available as downloadable software. Cribble emulates multiple destinations and appears to the source system as their intended destination. Sources send data to Cribble as if they're talking to a Splunk indexer or a syslog or Elasticsearch server. Upon receiving the event, Cribble processes the event as seen in the demo and then delivers to the configured destination for the route. Cribble works an event at a time and supports back pressure when a remote destination is unavailable. For ephemeral sources, Cribble will soon support persistent queuing. Cribble requires only Node.js and version 10 or better is recommended. Cribble can run on a VM or in a containerized environment. And we've tested Cribble in Kubernetes and AWS Elastic Container Service. Each instance of Cribble can process about three to 500 gigabytes a day, or about 20 to 50,000 events per second per CPU core. 
Cribble is a stateless processing engine, requiring no coordination between nodes. To add capacity, Cribble recommends a scale-out strategy. Cribble has been tested in scale-out scenarios into the tens of terabytes a day. More cores running Cribble equate linearly to more processing capacity for data. Thank you for listening. Hopefully this overview has informed. For any additional questions, please visit us in our community Slack at cribble.io slash community or send us a note at hello at cribble.io. Hey.